my name is Johnny Murdoch and I'm a tattoo artist or artist of tattoos, however you want to spin it, from Victoria, BC, Canada. Yeah, I remember in grade maybe 10 and there was an older guy in my school, Nolan McMahon, and I saw a tattoo on him that just kind of shook my world and at around the same time a guy in my high school art class, Ivan MacGyver, had found um, an ad in a triad, which is basically the physical form of a Kijiji for tattoo equipment for sale. So I had no money and no car, but we came up with a plan. My buddy Beamer got, somehow got $700 from his uh, grandma. And I remember we uh, bought an ounce of weed and we had about $500 left over. So we drove up to Brantford, Ontario, and this nice gentleman with big moccasin boots and a, a big braided ponytail came to the door and basically sold me a box of $500 worth of junk and uh, had a, a big 10 inch foot pedal. And he actually gave me, remember he gave me a tattoo needle and said, you can use this, don't worry, I don't have anything. And he told me that if I wanna practice to, uh, practice tattooing on the bottom of my feet. So I tried that a couple times, didn't go too well. Tried to tattoo some of my friends, that didn't go too well, but then I just, you know, stuck with it for years and years. Back then, this was before you could really buy pre-made needles, so I was, you know, trying to do a tattoo, but at the same time, I, you know, was trying to come up with the equipment to do the tattoos. Around that time, I started getting tattooed by John Austin, which was Mike Austin's brother. And back then, that was a, a way artists would uh, get information. So he would tattoo me, and then I would say, you know, what needle grouping are you using? What kind of ink? And then I could go back and then plug that into my, my own work. I got an opportunity about nine years, 10 years into my career to work at Government Street Tattoo, which was, you know, such an awesome experience. But I was, you know, kind of hiding behind my style. I started working with a, a legendary tattooer, Jamer, who originally opened Government Street Tattoo, rest in peace. He just broke me right down. He was like, what are you doing? You've been tattooing for 10 years and you're awful. He's like, there's no cake. You're just squirting icing all over stuff. And, uh, you know, he really, influence the way I look at art, you know? It doesn't matter how weird it is. It's, you still gotta, it still has to have a foundation. It has to be based off real things, you know? Um, there's like, there's that saying in art, um, learn the rules like a pro so you can break them like an artist. You know, Jamer instilled a lot of that into me. Yeah, I remember he used to say to me, this is not nom, Johnny. This is tattooing. There are rules. And I was like, what the heck does that mean? And then. Later realized it was a big Lebowski quote, but that was always a good one. I remember uh, Jamer left Government Street and before he passed away, one of the last times I saw him, I saw him on the street. And uh, I was kind of rebuilding my style, like trying to build my confidence up as a tattooer. And uh, he's like, oh, I saw this peony tattoo that you did. It looked really nice. And I was like, ah, I, I wasn't really happy with it. You know, they're, uh, there were some things I would have done differently. And he's like, yeah, now you're getting it. If you drew an eagle every day for a year, you're gonna progress. If you do jujitsu every day for a year, you're gonna progress. And I was never a super artistically gifted kid in terms of visual arts. If you practice the same thing every day, you're gonna get better. And. Uh, you know, a lot of the Japanese have that in their art, but there are formulas and techniques, you know, to be able to resolve how to draw an image. And that's not for everybody. Some people are really artistically gifted, but that was never the case. I think I've always felt a little bit insecure about being a bad artist. And I always feel like I'm, you know, 
People are gonna find out that I'm really not that good at the craft. People say, oh my God, wow, you're so talented, but nobody sees the you know five hours you worked drawing it, working it out. People don't really view progress. There's that saying, uh, people get praised in public for what they uh, practice in private, and it's so true. Be being a tattooer, there's so much behind the scenes work if you want to try to do the best work that you can. I played on a soccer team uh, when I was uh, a young teen and my coach Tony Tamburo was friends with the owner of Blue Dragon Tattoo Shop in London and so we had blue Diodora track suits with a, a dragon holding a soccer ball and even at that time I was like man this jacket is badass. I like dragons but I really had trouble drawing them like I, it took me a long time to figure them out. Um, I did a couple smaller fine line ones and they sort of just took off one led to the other. I just try to draw one, you know, every couple days and then a year later you look back at them and they've kind of warped and went in another direction and sometimes I'm like, oh that was really neat the way I was doing it. It's not how I would do it now, but um, it still looks cool. Yeah, there's no secrets or tricks to my work. I just take real images and interpret them. So if, uh, you know, you get a rose tattoo or you get an eagle tattoo from me. It's going to be sourced from good ingredients. I'm not going to screenshot another tattooer's work and trace it on my iPad. I'm going to look at a picture of an eagle. I'm going to go through the steps. You know, I'm going to source good ingredients and try to come up with an authentic good product for my patients. I definitely will just try to look at real life. I'll try to look at a scorpion or an eagle and uh, you know, I, I always look at Hakusai stuff and Horichio and some of the great Japanese masters and kind of see how they interpreted it. You know, it's it's just a tattoo and, and caring about caring about it that much is kind of stupid, but it's definitely my stupid. Yeah, I definitely have done lots of the snake tattoos and, uh, you know, just like the dragons, you're always learning something new. Like I'll look at the neck and be like, okay, the scales here get smaller and they slightly get bigger. And it's kind of this never ending cycle of, you know, drawing from my brain, then going back to the real image, whether it's like a cobra or a garter snake. And, uh, that's just for me the way my brain makes sense. I, I look at real life or nature, which is always to me the, the best expression of art is, you know, the real thing. And then I try to, you know, bring justification to the imagery. I love art, but nothing is better than an actual snake or actual mountains. Yeah, art, you're kind of trying to show people what you see in nature and what you love. And I've been very fortunate because before I was a tattooer, my main passion was reptiles. I used to breed snakes and geckos, and now I keep a limited amount of uh, animals, but I get to kind of share my love for, you know, snakes and dragons and all that stuff through tattooing that imagery on people. So I try to put a lot of, uh, you know, love into that, that type of uh, imagery. I 
think what people feel is normal for them as a tattooer is kind of how they started their career. But I did five years at Government Street and then five years at Lucky Fortune. Learned so much from Chris David and, you know, just working with all those guys. And then, you know, D-Boy was obviously a big influence on my career. Learned so much there. And then when I hit about 20 years of my tattoo career, I kind of wanted to go uh, full circle to just kind of like a more private studio. But it also, you know, has elements of street shop. We do do flash and yeah, it's kind of an amalgamation of um, everything I've liked about working in different tattoo shops. I work with uh, Kurt Von Getz. He apprenticed under D-Boy Sanchez and he's a very well-rounded tattooer. He can do fine line, traditional, flash style, whatever. So he's uh, been good to work with and he's always, you know, trying to improve himself as an artist and, you know, a, a certain amount of healthy competition where I know I, I'm trying to out-tat him and just stay one step ahead. But yeah, he's uh, been great to work with. So he's been at the studio for about um, two years. I'm really fortunate to have a good clientele that is uh, coming to me for the stuff that I like to do. And uh, I'll try to do it as long as I think I can do a good job. Knock on wood, I, I get to do a lot of tattoos that I think I can do a good job of and that I'm passionate about. Yeah, I love all styles of tattooing, you know. There's, well, there's some I don't care for, but I love a good traditional tattoo. At some point, I decided to try to focus on a few different styles, but my attention span's so short, sometimes I'll look at traditional, I'm like, hey, I could just do that. But I, I try not to hate on anything in tattooing, you know. Um, tattooing's changed a lot, but even like the books close culture that really helped me i have people now that email me and they say are your books open um would you like to do this tattoo and i didn't make it this way but i'm more than happy to reap the benefits in terms of how you want the tattoo to read on the body that's something you can look to uh, your patient for for um, direction um, but yeah the strongest element of a tattoo is always going to be the silhouette. Every painting I do, there's something I wish I did different and uh, it will be interesting. If I stick with it, it'll be interesting to see, you know, what kind of art I'm doing. Um, 20 years from now. Uh, Hakusai, one of my favorite artists, he said that um, he didn't do his best work till he was in his 70s and I found that super, you know, interesting and inspiring. I want my work to be recognizable, you know, um, and sometimes I think it does get repetitive where two tattoos might look similar but unfortunately that's just my process and how I go through things. I've seen tattoos where I can see People have pulled influence from one of my drawings and I find that a huge compliment, you know. I've pulled all my inspiration from other tattooers and people that come before me, but I mean one tattooer, one of my favorite tattooers, Oliver McIntosh, I remember the first time I saw his work I was like, holy crap, I gotta get my shit together, you know, and he's one guy who has elevated tattooing just from, you know, working hard and pushing the envelope and hopefully that can be my contribution i'm not a great artist never have been but uh i could work hard and show people that through repetition and discipline you can get better at something yeah goals for the future i just want to you know keep progressing you know looking at tattoos objectively and thinking about you know what i could do to make them better what i could take away what i could add yeah, I guess I'll reassess at the 30-year point. There's the, the Shuha Ri Japanese kind of philosophy of the, you know, three stages of learning. So I'm in the third part, the um, 
20 to 30 year. And that, that's supposed to be sort of, it starts with um, learning tradition, keeping tradition, and then breaking tradition. So um, yeah, we'll see where the work breaks away and goes. But uh, for now, it's just, you know, take it one tattoo at a time and keep doing my painting, keep doing my art, try to stay happy and healthy and, you know, just be here now. Yeah, and uh, you know, 23 years later, I'm just doing the same thing. I still feel like I'm a student of the game, and um, you know, I'm always excited to work with other artists. And every tattoo I do, I try to look at it objectively, and you know, don't beat myself up too much, but look at the areas where there's flaws and you know things I could have done better. Yeah, I'm just super grateful, super grateful to have a good place to work. Super grateful for all my friends, everybody in tattooing. That's uh, supported me and let me stay on their couch and you know all my peers in tattooing I'm lucky to have people that are pushing the envelope and inspire me daily um, you know really fortunate to get to live on this beautiful island and make art every day and thanks uh, to everybody who buys a painting or gets a tattoo or you know just hangs out and has a cider with me but uh, yeah much love